Davis, there's Elton the with the three. Tipped around, Hodge keeps it alive, and the general still, well, calls the timeout. North Carolina State ball. Timeout will back. Butler wants to jump, but Miller did get the call. And Herb Sendak wants a foul. The timeout, NC State. Down three. 62-49. Dana Altman sitting over there trying to figure out a way to score against this outstanding Illini defense. Well, no turnovers, nothing but conversions. And six opportunities to get field goals. And uh, you look at the Corver family. Well, they've been busy this week. Kyle's brother Clayton won the AAA state championship in Pella. And his mom, Lane, and uh, father, Kevin, very happy to be here. They've been very busy. That's uh, the brother, Clayton. Got 20 points last night in that championship game. I asked Kyle if the family were the family, the members of AAA, and I meant obviously the... Uh, Three-point game in Dallas is the closest it's been since it was 6-3 Texas with just under 18 minutes left in the first half. We look at the game summaries, and you look at Mississippi State, Bob, they are shooting 50%, 11 of 22. And the turnovers, however, for Texas, now up to 20 on the game. And T.J. Ford, the one we've been talking about all day, has seven of those turnovers. And I want to ask you a question. They were down so big. Who let these dogs out? Stansberry's <laughs> <laughs> got his guys defended. Oh. Presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. While well, you wonder what's a knockin', welcome back to Singular at the Half. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg in our score at halftime. The Panthers leading California by one. This promises to be nip and tuck all the way. Well, they're certainly knocking down the backboard in this game. Neither one of these teams can make shots. 41% for Pitt, all of six on the line. They're only a 61% free throw shooting team on the year, and yet it's a one-point game. Um, Pitt, both of these teams very physical on the defensive end, so not a lot of good shots to be had at either end. Winner of this game gets a ticket to Lexington to play Kent State next week. And now in Washington, D.C., North Carolina State trailing UConn by three. Coming up on eight and a half to play in the second half. Winner of this game goes to Syracuse next weekend. Let's take you to the MCI Center and join Jim Nance and Billy Packer. And the one senior who makes a real difference on this rebirth. North Carolina State basketball, Anthony Grundy. The line for one more will pack down two. Well, we're at the 839 mark, and as I said, NC State against Michigan State did not score a field goal and still won the ball game because it was so good from the free throw line. There's the difference. Instead of dribbling, hit ahead. Oh, Selby wildly put it up. Lost the handle up on the shot. Mont Miller for the three. He's going to fire oh, off. Oh, instead, inside Powell, pinned by Butler. What a block. Not a good move by Miller. I think he should have been better off taking the three because he had people inside to rebound. Watch this behind. Great job by Butler. Powell lost the handle. Blocked as well. Okafor got a hand on it that time. Selby secures it in the corner. Rather not have Selby handling that ball through Connecticut. Wisely gets rid of it. Eight minutes to go. Looks like we're headed for a tight finish here in Washington. Miller threw to an open teammate, but Jim, I think if he had that to do over again, he had a three right in the range he likes it, had plenty of time to set up. Double team now on Butler. Somebody's open. It's Robertson. They don't get him the ball. Ten on the shot clock. And Butler would like to go on Miller. He's so much bigger. Okafer from Butler for the basket. Set him up. Really never had to develop into a pick and roll, just uh, just the roll part of the pick. NC State does a lot better when they have Ethimov and Melvin out here than Powell because that allows Okafer to go down inside, be the shot blocker. Miller in traffic back out. Melvin banks it home. Nice move. 55-54, Huskies almost stolen by Grundy. All 
almost went off Brown's hand after the tap. What a block we've seen here by Butler. Huskies lead it by one. So UConn with a 55-54 lead as they come up on seven minutes to play in regulation. Meanwhile, in Dallas, second round action in the Midwest. Texas with a 61-57 lead on Mississippi State. Let's take you there live. Craig Bullerjack and Bob Wenzel. Two-point game, 61-59. They got it to Austin at the right time. Finally, the postman gets a normal move for him. Bob, you have to wonder if the burn alarm, the strength of this crowd will fuel Texas. And there is Erskine with his 16th point. Does not miss very often. Only 6'6", but plays much, much bigger. Nice entry pass. The help is there, but a little bit late. Use of the glass to soften the shot. And Mario Austin leading his case. Picks up his first, Erskine. Eight of nine in this game from the floor. And look at his field goal percentage for the season. 63. Does he take good shots? Very, very powerful player. Well, he had 16. Eight of 12, Bob, against Boston College on Friday in round one. He's not good from the line, but he's good from the field. 17 points. Texas now up by five, less than two minutes left. Zimmerman. Ignerski drives, gives it back. Zimmerman has it knocked away from behind, and it's going to be T.J. Ford, the national freshman of the year, with his fourth foul. He went behind late in the shot clock. Mississippi State is attempting to get the ball to Mario Austin. He has been collectively guarded by all of the Texas players with great help. The design has been very effective for Rick Barnes' team. One and one for Bowers. This is the one player you can, uh, you can afford to foul. He struggles at 59%. Thomas grabs the miss. Big miss. Hard to stay 1-3-1 one, one here. You got to create it with man-to-man -man defense. Less than a minute and a half to go. This is where Ford should shine. His quickness and ball handling ability, distribution at the end of the shot clock becomes very, very important. Mouton on the wing. Thomas flares up top. Patience by Texas. Eight on the shot. Six on the shot. Ivy lost the dribble. Ford now with three, with two, with one at the buzzer. Off the iron, Zimmerman chases it down in the corner. Less than a minute to go. Five-point game. Texas with the lead. Harper squares up. And Mississippi State trying to thwart Texas's bid to become the third Big 12 team to reach the Sweet 16. 64-62 Longhorns. One other game in Chicago. Creighton's Blue Jays trail Illinois 68-55. They are under two minutes to play. Thank you for joining us on Singular at the half. Back to Pittsburgh for second half action after this. CBA Sports presents Singular at the half. Sponsored by Singular. The wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. Ivy has made some driving baskets in this game at key times, and this is one of them. Zimmerman bumped him before the shot. I think it's one and one. It is Ivy, Royal Ivy, 77% from the line. He's made one of two in this game. He's been a tough, durable player all year long for Rick Barnes. Started all 33 games since the first. Nothing but net. Confidence. Freddie Williams, the senior, about to come in. They need his defensive presence. He is their stopper. Texas, 10 of 12 from the foul line. That's how you win close games. Williams not coming in yet. Maybe he's in for the shooter. Ivy with another. 
Big one here. Makes it. Eight points for Ivy. It's a four point game. Texas. Last possession, a three. Got it. We'll see. Texas and Mississippi State. Four point game in Dallas. Zimmerman. Ignerski. He is hounded by Ivy and the ball out of bounds. Shot clock is off. 15 ticks remain. Williams in for four. Ford, not as good a defender as the senior. Into Ignerski with the bad thumb. Launches the three. Off. Often the follow. And a timeout. Great job by Mario Austin on the weak side. Austin with a dozen. It's a two-point game. And the Illini up by 13 points. Extension of these arms. He pulls it back even further and gets the second shot. Terrific job on his part. Third foul on Ron Butler. You know, he was in the motion for the shot and then changed the motion. And we said this the other day, and anybody that's ever seen him play before, listed 6-3, but really plays about 6-6. The second half step up here by Grundy. Not unusual. Had the sensational game against Maryland in the ACC tournament this year, and the big win against the uh, against the Terrapin, 24 points, eight rebounds, four assists. Brown to Butler, and one. Chance for the three-point play, matched at the other end. Ten seconds and change remaining. You look at the timeouts, Bob. Texas with the luxury of three. Mississippi State has used their final timeout. And when Mississippi State fouls, excuse me, Craig, on this next one, they're nine fouls. So on a normal foul, they will get two shots instead of one-on-one. -on -one. Who do you foul in this situation? Erskine and Thomas. All likelihood if they touch the ball. Texas called a timeout. They both looked at each other. Who's on the floor? We'll take a break. Ten seconds. Back left after this. I did not get ranked until after they won the SEC tournament. If ever there were proof that the polls are a joke, Mississippi State is the team that proves that. And they beat Kentucky early at home as well. Remember, the polls are 25% of the equation in football. They have nothing to do with it in basketball, and that's one good decision by the committee. And a foul spotted inside against uh, Bowden. Timeouts left. Texas just used their third. They've got two remaining. Possession arrow pointing to Mississippi State. Two-point game. 10.6 seconds left. A diamond here. Possibility of a long throw. They want to get it to four. Boniker dances, tries to get it inbounds. He does to Ivy, and there's a whistle in the corner. But what you need to do, obviously, is foul immediately. Stansbury's team did that. Only way to stop the clock when you have no timeouts left. However, because it is the 10th foul, they will shoot two rather than one and one. Bulldogs also lose the services of Michael Goler, his fifth. He uh, leaves with eight points and a board for Mississippi State. Goler, a senior, has fouled out in his last game for the Bulldogs. A very big contributor to the success of this team. Bob Ivey is three for four from the line. Texas is a team 11 of 13 and six of seven this half. That's the kind of statistic that after the game, when you find out why we won or lost the game, frequently you point to the success or failure at the free throw line. And right here, Texas really doing a great job from the line. Well, they were waiting for Rick Stansberg. Steal. Greg Gumbel in New York, final moments of the game. Once a shooter, now a complete player. He didn't get enough opportunities today. And Illinois advances to the Sweet 16 in Madison, Wisconsin.
A masterful performance by Bill Self's team defensively, locking out the 12th seeded Blue Jays off of their miracle finish against the Florida Gators. Not today. Lucas Johnson's family looks on, and for Terrell Taylor, he got to wear number 23 at the United Center in Chicago. And for a time, he truly was a star. It was difficult for him to get a shot off this afternoon. Terrific rebound. New 35 for the Huskies. Eight rebounds for Butler. That shot. Brown over for battling. At the bottom of that with it. Got Miller in the ball game. He can shoot a three. Got Melvin. He can shoot a three. At the bottom. Pretty good three point shoot. Run D to the floor. Robertson had to. Five percent of the season. From behind the three point line, they have no timeouts. Ontario Harper is her best bet for the three at 44%, and he made one moments ago. I wonder if her stands right at a four point line in the roster. They get to the middle of the roster, go to the middle, inside, they step out.
with the first. Got him. Pack must have Butler miss one of the final two here. Jim, you know, the reason why we were all faked out on that, Butler is so strong that even though he was hit on the arm, he was able to get that shot up there. And the next one, so critical. Miller comes back on the floor. Butler with 31, that's the all-time point record for NC State. In the NCAA tournament game, breaking the Bill Walton 29 mark in the NCAA game by the ball. And a good job by Hodge, a nice uh, defensive maneuver by Coach Sendak to put a bigger man on Butler, figuring he was going to try to post him up or take him down inside somehow. This for the four-point lead. I could seal it. 10 for 10 at the line today, Karan Butler. Grundy might as well take it to the basket right now. Gonna drive on Brown, now give it up Evtema from the corner, hits the three with four seconds in a timeout. One they, point game. Oh, now what the Ernst they two. is saying he got fouled. Well, they're not gonna get the call. They do get the timeout and they wanted the foul. They're saying exactly the same call on the other end. Wow. And they do not get it here. Kick out, jump shot. I didn't I see know, the contest. No, I didn't see that. It's not the same call at all. Four seconds to go. UConn by one. <laughs> NC State has had a couple of thrilling last-second victories this year against Houston and Clemson. Okay. Jim, they're not going to guard the man taking the ball out of bounds. You'd like to follow Brown if you had a chance. You're going to follow Butler, and he has been the man on that foul line today. But good move by NC State. Six tenths of a second off on that one. He's made all ten of his free throw attempts. Shoots 76 percent on the year. It's a double bonus too now on both sides. So two shots for Butler. Co Big East Player of the Year has been the man of the hour for this team today. Look, he's 10 for 10, and the team is 19 out of 20 in the free throw line. He just hit three out of three a moment ago. But the Wolfpack has worked its way back to where we at least have a shot for a tie. Perhaps even a shot for a win if Butler misses this one and they have, connect the three. They have one timeout left. I think in this kind of case, you get the ball and quickly to half court and call that timeout rather than try to bring it up the length of the floor. Three-point margin. See if they do. Melvin inbounds to Hodge. Hodge must hit it to send it to overtime. UConn advances to Syracuse. Hodge so close by inches on the foul on Butler, and then the miss off the rim on the shot. He's on the floor right now. Just a 
of inches for Hodge. Just think he just did nip Butler on that jump shot and then just does miss what would have been a three to tie this game. Terrific job by a young team of, of NC State and a great job by the veteran Butler. Hodge got a good look at it for the final shot. He really did. The East Regional in Syracuse. UConn is set to take on the winner of Southern Illinois, Georgia. Kentucky has already earned the berth there. Here's the final shot. Could he yep. advance it any deeper? He probably could have, yep. but it was a pretty good job on his part. He was right there, as I said, a matter of inches right on the rim. And he falls to the ground, realizing so close but so far away. The Chevrolet players of the game, Anthony Grundy and Karan Butler. UConn has won 11 straight games. Jim Calhoun is now 18 and 2 in first and second round games. His Huskies, one of the hottest teams in the nation. On to the Sweet 16 behind Karan Butler today. Let's send it to New York and Greg Gumbel. Cal has gone scoreless in the last five minutes and 20 seconds. They have uh, 20 seconds. They have fallen behind by six. It's almost a really large lead in this kind of game. Uh, substantial, and it's imperative each trip defensively that you buckle down because the opponent is. And uh, right now, it's very hard for Cal to score. You might look for some inside touches and a kick out for a jumper if they don't score down low. A little pressure applied by the Golden Bears. There's the alley the drop pass. Great entry. Brandon Knight. You know, you've got to be a long time starter to have the courage to make that play in such a crucial situation. Up and under, Zavotskis. That's knocked out of bounds. In New York, second round action continues this evening. Take a look at what's coming up in the East Southern Illinois against Georgia. Tip time 445 in Chicago. At 446 in Dallas, Xavier and Oklahoma will tip in the West. And then at 501, the East Wisconsin and top seed Maryland in Washington, D.C. The Yukon Huskies move on to Syracuse. As a member of the Sweet 16, 77 74, where NC State Brown Butler a career high 34 points. He also had nine rebounds. In Dallas, the Texas Longhorns are in the Sweet 16 by virtue of a 68 64 win over the third seed in the Midwest, the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. In Chicago, Illinois moves on to Madison, Wisconsin, they'll play Kansas 72 60. The Illinois beat Creighton. And in Pittsburgh, right now, as we speak, 10 45. And down to 12. And uh, Johnson wasn't quite sure what yeah. to do there. And Knight was ready on the other side to do some damage. Should have reversed it. And Weathers for Cal as they continue to find nothing in the tank. They're in a hurry now. That's not their game. Knight knocked out of bounds. Eight minutes and 40 seconds since Cal last had a field goal. Well, second round action coming here at Pitt and a little later this afternoon. Our second round games will feature Southern Illinois against Georgia, Xavier, Oklahoma, and Wisconsin against Maryland. Lakins picks up his third foul. Knight. And Brandon able to put it on the floor. Mom and Dad there enjoyed it. Uh, what a thrill for both of them. Louis Brennan, a great performer at Stanford. Now in his pro career, of course, this young guy who's this is a different type of player than Brevin, mm -hmm. but yet bites you just like Brevin did. Runs the show, commands a lot of attention, and defensively so disruptive. One of two at this uh, opportunity. Here's A.J. Diggs for California. About technology. Tech TV is available now on Direct TV, channel 354. Boy, has he been successful. I think he's got a tremendous future. Hayes on the glass. Georgia getting a number of second chance opportunities, unable to convert. Weber now in his fourth year with Southern Illinois. Williams in traffic, wanted a foul, did not get it. Steal by Dearman, three on one. Roberts! And the crowd, clearly the Carbondale effect and the Illinois effect in the pod factor. They're very much behind Georgia. Saved, but the Bulldogs recovered. 
George's wings are very, very tall. Ezra Williams, 6'4", Jarvis Hayes, 6'6". Six, six. Hayes will post up the smaller Ken Williams. Southern Illinois plays three guards. George's wings are huge. Air ball for Thomas, and I think you can hear this crowd firmly behind them. Inbounds, Roland Roberts wants to win badly here today. Foul spotted off the ball inside. We'll go against Chris Daniels. We talked about Southern Illinois from Carbondale, about five and a half hours south of uh, Chicago. Strong enrollment factor, and they've had some success in this tournament. Guys like Walt Frazier played there. Mike Glenn, the stinger. With that feathery touch from deep. Out of bounds, it'll be controlled to Georgia. Rashad Wright may be the most improved point guard in the country, certainly in the SEC. Every aspect of his game improved after being recruited by Harris. Jarvis Hayes, two, two assists already, showing he can give the ball up as well as score. Roberts, off to Dearman. Very athletic underneath, and Roberts gets whistled for the foul. Well. The roberts Deerman factor, they were quicker than Texas Tech, made them look very slow. Well, very, very slow and very athletic. I think Roland Roberts, I'd put 6'10 on the board, not 6'6 when we were talking about our matchups. Deerman is a quick twitch, very active player, quick hands, and gets the ball in the basket before you can even leave the floor defensively. And again, a reminder on the Fogler glossary, by quick twitch, you mean? I mean, just gets up so quickly, not necessarily high, but quick off the ground. Ezra Williams so big for the position. Thomas Strip, but a foul. And if that's, uh, well, I believe they whistled Willis. It could have been Roberts, and that would have been tough. So Sylvester foul. Willis happy to take that foul, the sophomore from Calumet City, Illinois. Furious. Oh, look at a little elbow inside, and a whistle on Brown. We'll be back to Dallas. Ian uh, Daniels also players that have been counted upon this year. I think Georgia is not a team known for its depth. That's one of the reasons why yesterday Jim Herrick allowed most of the starters short of Thomas an opportunity to get a breather. And that makes Jonas Hayes so important who came in with 14 points and 14 rebounds on Friday night off the bench. That's the twin brother of Jarvis Hayes. Three-quarter court press trying to make it more difficult for Southern Illinois to get into its motion. Williams to Roberts. Crash the glass and now numbers for Williams. He's got a three on two. Leaves it for Wright. Nice cut to the hoop by Rashad Wright. A year ago, he wasn't confident enough to do that. Georgia out to the 9 2 lead. Stetson Hairston gives it up. Rejected by Daniels and Thomas inside. Very active. Bulldog size, much as was the case for Illinois, a factor in the second game today here in Chicago. Stepping into the passing lane, Willis with a near steer. See the shooting only one for five for the Salukis early. Hayes over Williams. He's got it all. Take that. Already we've seen Richard Wright able to beat the Southern Illinois guards off the dribble. Texas Tech could not do that on Friday night. Big advantage for Georgia. He had 31 the other night, a career high. So is his jump shot. He's going to be in a pit uniform if they continue. The lead is 11. 12. How about this conversation? Huh? Yep, still it, coaching, isn't he? It's one way, though. A little whisper. Some kindness, but I'm sure more strident about keep your remarks to yourself. A lot of woofing went on today between or amongst players I should say offensive board fresh 35 with 405 to go and Ben saying motion on the sideline oh Knight tries to find Brown 355 remaining Pip up by 12. 
versus Big 12. Only one team from the Atlantic 10 Conference in this year's tournament. The Xavier Musketeers from Cincinnati, Ohio. And of course, the Big 12 well represented in this tournament. Texas having won earlier on this floor. Xavier's won 20 of their last 22, Bob. That's a lot. New coach this year. Their former coach, Skip Prosser, now at Wake Forest, Thad Matta doing a great job getting these guys oriented. Chalmers one-on-one -on -one with four on the shot clock. Switches to the left hand and right. Chalmers follows the miss. And a fresh shot clock for Xavier. Sato on the drive, got hung up. Off the hands of Fry, he trips, and it's going to be Oklahoma basketball. Good hustle on everybody's part. Thad has to be happy with his team's second half performance against Hawaii. They were down seven. Turned up the heat defensively in the second half, and that's what got them here. A lot of the Atlantic 10 coach of the year, leading Xavier with a 26 and 5 record. Dietrich in for Oklahoma. That's where McGee's good, facing. Or a left hander, sweet yeah. shot. A lot of confidence from about 10 to 12 feet out. Originally attended Cincinnati, then went to Vincennes Junior College, and now here with Oklahoma. Cincinnati, of course, losing today against UCLA. Wow. The Bruins showing up. Took a pair of OTs, didn't it? Yes, sir. Great game. Dietrich, the rebound. Oklahoma. White comes across midcourt. We played just over five minutes. McGee on that low block backs in. Big body. Turn around from the other side. And he hits. You've got to double team him. You think this guy is dangerous? The face-up. Fry does a good job in challenges. He makes it anyway. No double team on a back to the basket. The turnaround fadeaway. Bottom. McGee doing it. Well, he hit a three. Now he stepped from one baseline to the other. A pair of. Greg Gumbel in New York, under four minutes to play. Pittsburgh leading California. We'll keep track of that game for you. Meanwhile, they're underway in Dallas, Oklahoma, with a 15-6 lead on the Musketeers of Xavier. In Chicago, they are underway, and the Bulldogs of Georgia, the number three seed in the East, with a 12-5 lead on Southern Illinois. The game about to tip in Washington, D.C. The top seed in the East, Maryland, about to take on the Wisconsin Badgers. We will take you to the MCI Center for the start of that game that's coming your way next after this message and a word from your local station. Advice, uh, counsel, just a caring guy, just a, a young man uh, in, in the way he thinks, so they relate very well. Nice addition to your staff without compensation. <laughs> Here's Knight. Ah. Once again, huh? Yes, what a great pass. There's a foul underneath. Uh, you are seeing the skills of a magnificent point guard on display today. You know, from when he was a young great school player, he had a head to run a team. And his dad, as we mentioned, uh, counseling him and coaching them on occasion in the summers, uh, just developed some insight. And Mel was telling me before the game that he's just enjoyed his growth with Ben Howland. He think that's what's turned it around where they're on the same page. And, you know, and acknowledging the free throw shooting, truly one of the great people I had the honor to coach right there. Chevy Trotman shoots one more. Well, you think the five teammates from Weber State of Ben Howland have enjoyed their trip oh, here? My goodness, I'd hate to see that uh, tab when they check out of the hotel. But it's good they're all prosperous because they can come back and go to Lexington if this thing continues. 52-39. Page goes for the steal and touches it as it goes across the sideline. Now, have you noticed? I think they got a timeout. Uh, the last half, Cal doing things you're not accustomed to seeing them do. Little rattle burn. 52 39. Pitt leads. Sports Road to the Final Four continues with East Region action from our nation's capital. The number one seed in the East, the Maryland Terrapins, take on the Big Ten co-champion Wisconsin Badgers. Full house here at the MCI Center. 
And the winner will advance to Syracuse in the Sweet 16 in a matchup with Kentucky. The Wildcats advancing yesterday past Tulsa. Hello, friends. Jim Nance, Billy Packer. And uh, again, the one seed here has to get by a team that accomplished much more than anyone expected this year in the Big Ten, the Badgers of Wisconsin. He and Chip never got on track. No. And it's just a testimony to the ability of the forwards, or I shouldn't say forwards, perimeter people in Brown and Page. I mean, they just get down and dirty after you. I'm thinking back to what uh, Ben Hallen told Leslie Visser as they went to the halftime break. I want Brandon Knight at the free throw line at the end of the game. He's shooting 45%, but what great confidence he has in his point guard. Well, he's got some Valentine, this guy. Now the crowd Ooh. wanted basket interference. It's not there. 2.57 to go. And Pitt on the verge of winning its second game in the tournament for the first time in 25 years. And the way they guard it, you thought they were behind on that particular trip. Uh, aggressive. And right now, a lot of little shots going back and forth, too. Guys raising the arm just a little bit. The home run look, and they don't need it. There's Knight, who, by the way, was a great football player. In junior year stop once he got hurt. Oh, and Troutman's going to go to the line, but a no-look pass from Brandon Knight. Well, I'm watching him and thinking back to Ben Hallen, who played. You've met his uh, his teammates from Weber State. His first job was at a graduate assistant at Gonzaga. Oh, and who was there? And a guy named John Stockton was the point guard. Ben Hallen helped coach him. Now, what I loved about Ben was his honesty. I said, did you think he would be as good as he became? He said, absolutely not. In fact, one day he said he had the better of him. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, but then, of course, history he, is he, he, he did make that claim, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to check with John. Kind of a team that came on late in the season, 11 and 5 in the league, to share the title with three others. Penny. Turn nice around for patience. two. Beautiful patience by Penny. That's a word, really, you can apply to this team probably all game long. Patience. These two teams played last year against each other in the ACC Big East Challenge, and Penny had 18 in that one with four threes. There's your man, Wilcox. You called the key with the turnaround. They did meet a year ago. The game was played in Milwaukee. And Wisconsin won it in overtime. Dick Bennett retired right after the game. That's right. Changed a lot of things, and that's going to be a reach. No, it's an over oh, and back, they call it. Violation against the Badgers. A lot of body contact there, and again, let's watch this officiating. Bo Ryan saying right away, how about keeping, my, keeping the players' hands off me? Something we saw in the first round here. Hand checking was called very quickly. Steve Blake at the controls. He had 11 assists on Friday night. That was high for any player in the first round of this tournament. All time assist man at Maryland. Sets up Dixon. It's blocked. You see Harris on Dixon. Freshman. One of the top freshmen in the country. Not only in the Big Ten, but in the country. Playing Dixon. And he got a hand on that shot. Devin Harris, number 34 for Wisconsin. He can shoot it too. Nice matchup with Dixon guarding him. Wills locked out of bounds by Wilcox. One of the things that's going to be interesting in this game, too, is Wisconsin is not a deep team. Maryland, along with Kansas, probably has as good a depth, quality of depth, as anybody in the country at all positions. And really critical for Wisconsin to stay out of any foul trouble and make sure everybody's efficient. Then he thought he made that fadeaway three. It really is a team that plays only seven in all. Now the last three games, Wisconsin is 29 out of 48, which is over 60 percent in the three-point line, and that is really what has been the key factor for them getting to this game. Foul on Harris on the outside. Wilcox short on the jumper, and Wills secures it. So far, no second-chance points for Maryland. Something they'll really have to get in this game if they're going to be successful. Meter outside. Oh, too low. That pass at the ankle is a penny. Stolen away by Maryland. Maryland would love to get in a run-shoot game. Blake misfiring, and Mater had the box out. Very well-drilled Wisconsin team. Oh, absolutely. I watched him in a drill shooting, practice shooting fouls the other day, and I'd never seen it before in basketball, but it was so well done. 
Oh, Baxter called for that. Thought he made a clean block. It'll send Trevon Davis to the line for two. It's a Wisconsin team that started the year one and four. Bo Ryan taking over team of one returning starter. One and four to open the year, and they go on to get a piece of the Big Ten championship for the first time in 55 years. Yeah, he's right up there with uh, Mike Krzyzewski in regard to percentage of NCAA tournament wins. It's just at 30, he was 30 wins and five losses in Division Three. So it's a little different in the divisions, but he is now a 31 and five. Not bad. Give him his due at Wisconsin Platteville, where he won four national titles to Bo Ryan. And the all time winningest Division Three coach by percentage. There he is, the winningest coach in all of college basketball in the 90s when you factor in all the divisions. First year at Wisconsin, Big Ten Coach of the Year. Good solid defensive team here. And Baxter fouled on the way up. Baxter's going to be too quick for Mater, but the key right now for Ryan is to have Mater on the floor. He only plays 14 minutes a game, but here he's going to come out already. But uh, he really has to keep him on the floor for at least the 14 today because his team only goes seven deep. Mike Wilkinson will be replacing him. Wisconsin started the same lineup all 32 games on the season, including today. Wilkinson in for Mater. Jim, I was talking about the fundamentals that Bo Ryan has, and I talked about that foul shooting drill, how every guy was concentrating at every aspect, not only of foul shooting, but blocking out, practicing, working on things that you just don't ever see uh, done anywhere else. There's a turnover, unusual for Wisconsin. But I think it'd be smart for any high school coaches up in that Wisconsin area to go watch his team practice. You'll pick up something in a hurry. They have turned it over three times here in less than three minutes. Nixon. Shut down quickly, closed by Harris. Over to Wilcox. Oh, and there's what I was talking about at the top of this game. When he plays like that, you say, where in the world are the rest of the players? Why isn't somebody defending him? So talented. Straight man to man by Maryland. Gary Williams wanting to get this crowd into the game early. Wilkinson from the Good free shooter. throw line, yes. The freshman, Mike Wilkinson from Blue Mound, Wisconsin. Top rebounder, he comes in off the bench. Dixon, his first two. He just moved past Lynn Bias as the Maryland all-time NCAA tournament score. And he's five away from becoming the Terps all time score past bias. Look at him wait a little bit too long. He had Wills wide open. Davis with the three for the Badgers. Blake got lost on the defensive maneuver right there. Gave Davis a wide open look. So far, the tempo and the pace of this game has to be to Bo Ryan's liking. No fast break opportunities. Wilcox put it on the floor, taken away. Wills forced it. Davis comes out with it. He's got Harris on the wing, open for the three. He can shoot it. Not connecting this time. Loose ball picked up by Wilcox. That was Dixon to keep it alive. Almost stolen by Harris. Dixon with the three. That's where he was so hot the other day. And so far, Wisconsin doing a nice job on the board. Hey, the Davis went in there and fought for that rebound with Baxter and tipped it over to a teammate. Of all the conference teams that entered into the tournament this year in the NCAA, the worst rebounding team was Wisconsin. And Maryland certainly a solid rebounding club. Wills worked hard to get that open shot, unable to convert. Dixon over Top Harris. Shot. And look at little Trevon Davis at 5'10 underneath for another rebound. And you know what? It's a one and done situation for Maryland not getting on the offensive glass at all. And another thing that Maryland has not done, which I think they could do very well, is to get the ball to Baxter down low and let him maneuver. Charlie Wills with the three pointer. 12 to 8, Wisconsin. Excellent three point shooter. 37% on the year. He's taken 83s. Here's the play. Baxter on the inside. And Wills came over to help out. He's going to be called for that one with the body, with the hand check. Bonnie Baxter works hard, gets good inside position. He will draw an awful lot of fouls this year.
right knee. And again, 39 minutes in the game. He played 39 in the first round and counter. Zavatskis, one of two. And that's what a leader does, applauds his guys as his family applauds his performance and theirs. And after the intentional foul, Pitt will take it out of bounds. Jerron Brown, or Page rather. A trap, nice aggressive play. It's still loose. Here's Joe Ship. Off the glass and good. 61-36. Torrey Morris on the floor now for the final minute of play. 61-46. Here's Brown. Morris. Oh. <laughs> oh. Wow, insult too. <laughs> uh, now they know where to play him. He's a wing guy. Gates up and in. 18 seconds to go. One point game at the half, an 11 minute scoring drought from the field for Cal. And Pitt outscores Cal 37 25 in the second half. Now, Ben Braun, another great job with his guys, uh, but Pitt too much, too good, too tough defensively, and too much Brandon Knight. And a mile wide smile on Jerron Brown. He's going back home. He will take his teammates back to Lexington. And an encounter against Kent State in Rupp Arena. Our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. Shante Leggins from Cal, 13 points and two rebounds. Brandon Knight from Pittsburgh with 11 points, seven assists, many of them brilliant. The final score, 63-50. Pitt advances. We go back to New York and Greg Gumbel. All right, Vern, thank you. Pitts Panthers looking very sweet indeed. A member of the Sweet 16, 63-50 over California. In Dallas at this moment, the number two seed in the West, Oklahoma, leads seventh seed Xavier, 28-20, to coming up on eight minutes to play in the first half. In Chicago, in the East, Georgia leading Southern Illinois, 27-11, to and now 30-11, to under eight and a half to play in the first. And in Washington, Maryland trails Wisconsin, the top-seeded Terrapins trailing the Badgers by two. Still plenty of time to play in the first half. We'll be sending you to that game at the MCI Center after this message and a word from your local station.